I think I've pretty much decided at this stage that black paper really isn't for me, but bring on November, I guess. Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashi Karin and welcome back for my November 2020 plan with me. As can be expected, today we're setting up for November in my bullet journal, but before that, as per usual, we're just going to have a look at how October is going. So as you'll remember from my last monthly plan with me, my theme for October was kind of just a whatever I really felt like kind of theme, which really turned out to be interesting looking trackers and polka dot washi tape. So we had my cover page, my self-care bingo board and habit tracker, chores tracker and steps tracker, both of these need some filling in. We had my doodle page, which you can see hasn't really been a doodle a day kind of thing, but I'm hoping that at some point this weekend I'll get in and actually fill in some of these boxes. My 30 before I'm 30 spread. My birthday planning page. October challenges page and my Term 4 timeline page. This brings us to the end of the craft paper section and into the next blackout section. As the intro probably kind of suggested, I'm not a super big fan of using the blackout pages, just because I like to write in black ink and it's kind of hard to do on this, but I've thought of a couple of ways to get around that for the month coming. As always, any of the equipment I use is linked in the description box below, and without further ado, let's get into it. So, as I mentioned, I find using the blackout pages just a little bit challenging. I don't really like gel pens all that much, just because the drying time is really annoying, and then I seem to get a lot of transfer between the pages. So when I was thinking of what theme to do for November, I wanted to try and combat that wherever I could. The inspiration for the theme I decided to go for was from this picture, from Maddie of Plan With Maddie on Instagram. Although theirs was an Alice in Wonderland theme featuring neon lights, I thought the neon idea in particular was super cool. Rather than do everything in gel pens though, I figured a good way to add some decoration fairly easily was just to use bright coloured post-it notes, which I stuck in with double sided tape. This type of style is very much up my alley, just given how much I love the contrast of black and bright colours. Recently, I've become a lot more of a fan of just sticking decorative elements into my journal, whether they be stickers, washi, paper, or other things. Especially for when I've not been in a very doodly mood, or like in this journal, where the paper kind of dictates what pens I can use for decoration, sticking things in has just been a quick and effective way to add some visual interest. In their neon headers, Maddie used Posca paint pens and some other supplies, but I don't have any of those and I couldn't actually find any before it came time to set up my journal. So what I instead did was write out any of the headers with a pink Tombow and then letter over the top of these with a white gel pen. This meant that the white gel pen would pick up the colour underneath it. I did trial this with a couple of other colours in the back of my journal, but I found the pink stood out the best. You do really need to use quite a bright colour of Tombow for this. I'm actually pretty chuffed with how it turned out though, although it doesn't give quite the same glowing effect, having the kind of almost shadowing underneath the letters because of the Tombow, and the slight variations in how pink versus white sections of the lettering are just gives it a nice visual. After my cover page, which took roughly 14 minutes, it was on to what I'm calling my Make It Happen spread. In October, I found that there was a bit of redundancy between having a self-care bingo page, my monthly challenges page, and my new goal planner, which is called the Life Map. So instead of having my self-care and my monthly challenges pages separate, I decided to combine them into this one spread. Here I'm using smaller post-it notes to house each of the tasks that I want to get done in November whether they be self-care related, goal related, or otherwise. On each of these, I ended up drawing a little checkbox in the top left corner so that I can mark them off as they're completed. 
I decided to use post-it notes here not only as a way to add some bright colour to the page, but also so that I don't have to write in each of my items with gel pen, and then risk having that transfer issue that I talked about before. Also the nice part about using post-its is that if I do go in to write out an item and stuff up the spacing, or spelling, or something like that, I can just pull the post-it note off and replace it with a new one. As I normally like to do, I'm tying each of the pages in my monthly setup together by using the same style of headers. So going in first with the Tombow, then over the top using my white gel pen to do capital block letters. Even just using the same lettering style for headers and the same range of colours between the pages of a monthly setup can work really well in making it so that your layouts actually look like they belong together. This was certainly something that took a while for me to learn, and now I make sure to do it every month. In terms of the timing for the spread, setting this one up took about 18 minutes, and then it took an additional 12 minutes to add the three tasks that I ended up putting on here. Filling in the tasks does take a little while, just as I like to include little doodles and use different styles of lettering, so I like to plan out the spacing before I jump in with the pen. As much as I said before that if I do make an error on these post-its, I can just pull them up and put on a new one, I don't want to be wasteful, so I do try and plan my work and then work my plan. As I mentioned, I'm only putting three tasks on here at the moment, just because I want to wait until the end of October to see if there's anything I can move forward from my current self-care and monthly challenges pages. I'd be curious to know though, what kind of things do you guys have coming up in November? whether they be things you're looking forward to, or just things that you want to make happen. While the rest of the pages in my monthly setup were comparatively quick to set up, these next two took a little bit longer. On this spread we have my habit tracker on the left, and my around the house or chores tracker on the right, which took 36 minutes and 38 minutes respectively. I decided to go back to using mini calendars for my habit tracker in November. Literally only so that I could use these skinny post-its as banners to write each of my habits on. At this stage I haven't actually decided what those habits are going to be, so I don't write them out on camera here, but for each of the mini calendars I just outlined these using the same technique that I've been doing for the page headers. For my around the house or chores tracker, I wanted to mimic the design of my cover page. I figured that this would work well because it would allow me to frame the circular tracker and also not leave too much blank space on the page. This time I opted in for an orange post-it, and again just ripped it in half and placed each piece on opposite corners. This meant that I could put the header for the page across each of the corners that were left open and neatly fit the tracker in the middle. I really like the look of the ripped paper corners on this page, and I think that having it just be two halves of the one post-it note helps to keep it looking more balanced. Just like last month, to draw this tracker out, I of course used my stencil from Erin Flodo Designs, which I super love. I'm honestly just so glad that I bought this stencil because I love the way this tracker looks. If this is the first time you've seen this style of tracker though, do not panic. It's actually relatively straightforward to interpret once you understand what each section is for. I've got a video where I explain how this one works linked in the description box, so make sure to check that out if you're curious. As you'd have seen, to get the tracker in the same colour as each of my headers have been, I first coloured in the space with my Tombow. I kind of wish I had been a little bit more targeted in where I put that Tombow colour, just as I think it would have been kind of nice to have pink outlining for the tracker, but still have had the internal text written in white. It doesn't bother me too much, but if it does start to, at least I know I can just go over it a couple more times with my white gel pen to brighten that up. As you can see, I'm just writing in the same tasks that I had for October, and then I finish off the page by adding the headers, and also by writing down the little labels of the day of the week or the week of the month, depending on which section it is, for my tracker. I'm actually really pleased with how this neon theme turned out for November, but I'd love to know what is your theme for the month coming. Also, if you already knew what your theme for December was going to be, I would love to hear about that too. I have an idea for what I want mine to be, but I'm not 100% committed to it yet, so it'd be interesting to hear about you guys's. And for the final flip through we have my cover page. 
my Make It Happen spread, Habit Tracker, and my Around the House Tracker. A few less pages than usual this month, but as I said, don't really think the blackout pages are really for me. I don't really like having to come and fill a whole bunch of things in, so having less things to fill in is certainly going to be a win. As always, thank you for watching team. If you liked today's video, please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you wanted to see more from me, feel free to go check out one of my other videos. Until next time, bye!